The construction was in full swing. Matthew had been working non-stop for several weeks now, and for him they lasted an awfully long time. He was suffering from a fever that still did not want to get lost. His head was spinning, and in order to get Jin out of his thoughts, he decided that it would be better to plunge headlong into the robot. He heard a conversation in the background. The men talked about pills. One offered the other to try because it was difficult to get them. The interlocutor told him to finish with this case because at this rate he would turn into an imbecile without memory. His interlocutor told him that he had nothing to lose. That's exactly why he would take the pills. After all, he drinks these pills to forget himself, to drive through today's hard day and find the strength to move on to the next, and tomorrow also to work until exhaustion. He asked how people like them could survive, even without such a little fun and his interlocutor decided that he would not. After all, he used to indulge in this stuff a lot when he was grieving for his late wife. After all, everyone said that they were cool. They could cause hallucinations, realistic fantasies, everything. So he fell for it. Matthew froze. When he heard him say that in the end, instead of hearing his wife's voice at least once more, he began to lose his memory. All the memories began to disappear under zero from my head. The effect they had was this. Now, just thinking about them, a terrible fear rolls over him that, well, whatever, he won't fit these pills by a meter anymore. Matthew remembered how the guy in the bar offered Jin his magic medicine and said that he could forget himself. And then, when a cloud of memories flooded over him, which included both jealousy and horror of what was happening, he staggered and fell. Then the workers who were talking about pills ran up to him and started asking him if he was alive. After all, they told him not to overexert himself. They told him not to forget to rest. He was told to finish his shift for today, and not to make problems for himself, not for them. Matthew raised his head and asked, Were you just discussing pills? What are they called? The guys looked at him in misunderstanding, and asked pills. He said yes, which erase memories. A pack was thrown at his feet and offered to try it, and they said that their name is Montley. We are shown the building where Jin worked. All the people in it are terribly tired, because they have been working tirelessly for the last few weeks, and for the last few days they haven't had a chance to return home at all. The blonde, who had already finished her work, approached her friend, wondering if the director had gone home because they had been working for a long time and there were rumors about him that he had left a long time ago. Another girl told her that he was at a board meeting, showing them the final version of the project. The blonde, who previously thought a lot about Jing, is interested in what the girl said earlier, that the director is from the mafia, and she thought that he would only create the appearance of work, only pretend to be the boss and that's it, and he demonstrates such a serious attitude to the project. Moreover, he spent several days without sleep, and he didn't look tired at all. The girl opposite answered her that who knows what is going on in the minds of these gangsters. Apparently, this project is so important to him, and she said that she was already very tired and would go home. But the blonde said that instead of resting, she would go to her boyfriend, the girl who was conducting a dialogue with her side and left with irritation. Jin was sitting at his desk and looking at his hand. There was a cigarette case in it. Annoying thoughts did not leave his head. He thought it was nothing. People don't die from a few days without sleep. Although, if these days grow out of a few weeks, months, years, one day, after all, you will throw off your skates. But in any case, not now, it wasn't so bad with him. He remembered the voice in his head. He prophesied that even if he gets this land and its treasure and his ambitions and his greed are satisfied, then everything will not end there, he will need more. He did not understand what kind of treasure was on this earth, but looking at these old men who are ready to tear their asses because of some land for a museum. He had the impression that there was really something in this. He decided for himself that until he sees with his own eyes what all this turmoil with this land was about, then he cannot die. The desire to throw pills that were in his cigarette case broke him several times a day. One pill. And this withdrawal withdrawal will also come to naught, he thought. He was about to snap, taste this effect, return to the past and remove the sleepless years from his memory. But his thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door, asking if it was possible to enter. Yun Fat, his security guard, came into the office and informed him that the chairman of the board of directors would also be present at today's meeting. Jin slammed his cigarette case shut and put his hands under his head. Yun Fat addressed him more personally, restlessly. He told him that it seemed that Jin's insomnia was only progressing. Perhaps it would be better for him to rest now and entrust the presentation to his subordinates. Jin told him not to make a fuss. Yun Fat said that he understood that he was being impertinent at the moment by talking about it. But after waiting a little, he said that he had not visited the clinic he had signed up for before, too, for a very long time. Jin got up from the table, and an irritation told him not to cross the line. After passing the guard, he said that he would restrain himself at the moment, only because he valued him, but this was the limit beyond which he was not allowed to go. He slammed the door behind him. Young Fat continued to stand in his office with his head down. 
He knew how strong Jin was. But if there is at least one meager, one chance in a million, and it breaks, then what should they do? Who should they follow then? Jin has already started the presentation, and has already talked about the fact that so far the focus of their company Xinhai has been only practical-oriented projects, oriented mainly towards making a profit. But he offered to look at it from the other side. After all, the company will get a good opportunity to reconsider its own values, returning the corporation's profits to society through aesthetic architecture. If they undertake the construction of this city museum of art, then he was called by a representative from the company, with the question that apparently this time he was determined to represent their company again in negotiations on construction with the side of the museum. He was worried and sweat was running down his neck. Jin replied that yes, since his past mistake had led to negative consequences, now he, by all means, must personally get this Xinhai project himself. After all, while Palm Young has big problems because of the scandal related to corruption at the auction, they will go the honest way and the project will win in the framework of the general competition. What could be better than this chance that they have now? Some man who was sitting at the table spoke up and agreed with Jin because they are already constantly pointing fingers at them, saying that the roots of Xinhai extend from the gangster environment of Chokpo, and they are all mafia here. And if they win the contest, then no one will find fault with them. Now they have the opportunity to clean up their reputation. And the moment is also very appropriate, considering what's going on at Pamyang. All their searches due to corruption and arrests. Everyone praised Jin, and he said that he would not disappoint them if this case was given to him. Everyone agreed, because would they have any reason to worry if they entrusted him with this task? There was tension in the air. He clenched his fists, sweat was still running down his neck. Only now he was even worse. Someone said that a representative with such subordinates probably feels like behind a stone wall. Thanks to such talented successors, their company will undoubtedly have a brilliant future, said some man, then continuing that he was initially skeptical when he heard the idea of entrusting the project to a young kid. But now that he watched his presentation and realized that the representative had thought everything out wisely, the representative sat there and gritted her teeth and thanked everyone. When everyone started to disperse, she asked Jin to stay late. When they were alone in the office, she said that there were rumors that he had met one-on-one -on -one with a representative of Palm Yong. She asked if he had spread all the information about Jin Yu Lan. The tension was becoming unbearable. He said that it was a secret that even she did not enlighten him. Because she did not trust, then why would a representative of a competitor's company enlighten him in such things? However, given the fact that they, the old guys, hide everything, then curiosity will play out, whether you want it or not. He said that it would be interesting for him to observe their faces when he first takes possession of the treasure that this land promises. Listen to you. The representative addressed him with a menacing expression on her face. She asked if she looked like the one who would complete such an important project to a person she didn't even trust. She slammed her fist on the table and said it wasn't that she couldn't trust him. Pulling him by the collar to her in anger, she said that the thing was that she just couldn't believe the lies of a jerk who was constantly on drugs and was always rubbing with all sorts of old people because she couldn't keep her dignity in her pants. She pulled off his shirt and said that he showed up at the company and showed everyone how this old tiger bit his whole neck. She wasn't interested in whether he started having fun with this old jerk again, but she categorically can't trust Xinhai to a booby who can't control himself and won't stop with drugs in any way. She's giving him one last chance and let him just try to disappoint her again. She moved away from him and sat down at her desk with one foot on the other. Jin stood in shock, rubbing his chin, but when he stepped into the background, he began to say that he certainly forgives people, but definitely would not sleep with a man who used him so viciously, and then threw him out, and the one who bit his neck was not the grandfather from Palm Yong and the green-eyed kid. Before he could finish his sentence, people in black suits entered the room and turned to the director, saying that it was the order of the representative, and so that they would not cause each other inconvenience, they asked him to obediently follow them. Thanks for watching. Put likes and subscribe to the channel.